on a trip around Asia, we spent some time in the Gulf and we got lost one day in the desert. And while we were driving around, we came across a sign for labor camp. And we'd heard about these labor camps. We knew that living conditions weren't great. We knew that people weren't being paid well, but we had no idea then that people were genuinely being exploited to the point where they were never making enough money to pay off debt. Fifty Eight we was set up in, in 2014 by my wife Angela and I to work with companies around looking at essentially at exploitation in their supply chains. It was born out of many years of wanting to do something um, about the issue of modern slavery, but more broadly um, around the issue of workplace decency, um, human rights in the workplace and working conditions for those who often don't enjoy the rights that so many of us take for granted. So we look at uh, everything from modern slavery to child labour, human trafficking, these, these kinds of uh, challenges that companies face in their supply chains. So we do that through a mix of research, training and consulting work, and we do uh, practical solutions, technical solutions. Uh, and one of those is just good work. When we were engaging with companies and businesses who, um, who were very experienced, who'd spent a lot of years trying to engage with this issue of modern slavery, the one area they felt um, that had the least visibility, the least transparency and where they had the least control over was the way workers were coming into factories and coming onto farms and workplaces within their supply chain. With Just Good Work, what we're really trying to do is to make sure that Wherever somebody finds themselves in that journey, either of looking for a job or they're in their place of work overseas, right the way through to when they return back home, that they really do know what's okay and what's not okay at every stage in that process. For a lot of people who become victims of modern slavery, it's not a case of one person deceiving them or putting them on a ship and selling them to somebody else as we often understand slavery from history. But in modern day slavery, it's so many different actors taking a little bit of money from them, taking a little bit of rights away from them. And all these people, all these actors along that journey can become like invisible links in a chain that um, collectively um, cause somebody to become a slave essentially because they, they can never pay back the debt that they have um, accrued during that recruitment cycle. I knew somebody who was a recruitment office for Gulf workers. Okay, now I went to him and said, do you have jobs? He says that, yes, I do, but I have a job that you have to pay because you came looking for it. I owed my family. You know, one week before we left, they asked us to go to Nairobi and sign some documents that said we'd never paid anything for any service that they had. So I'm worried, yes, but what? what? What else? Because this one situation looks hopeless and the other situation you never know. What can be done more in terms of improving the welfare is first of all, you know, the regulations to, 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 to make sure that the regulations that have been put in place are followed and the workers themselves know. Because I think there is lack of awareness and, you know, education in terms of workers. I think one of the reasons we chose to use a mobile app for Just Good Work is because we know that a lot of people when they're choosing to migrate for work, one of the first things they will make sure they have with them is a phone and usually a smartphone. The mobile app, this is to provide that information because this is the missing link. Yeah, what the people are coming here, what they need is the information. And of course, when you have full information, then you are empowered because we have found people coming here. They don't know what they are coming to do. I'll give a very good uh, example of people who've used uh, the Just Good Work app. So you tell them this is what's happening, they'll go there, they'll see the list of uh, vetted uh, agencies, 
well, you know, they'll, they'll ask questions. Now you start explaining, for example, you have information before you leave the country and it gives you the information when you get here, you know, uh, what you need to know about the country, what are the do's, what are the don'ts, what are your labor rights, you know, what's, you know, the rights that, uh, that comes with your employment or you as a person. So when people have that information, uh, it's, uh, it's very important. So it happened that I was working with Lyft 256 where we were um, schooling people who could develop software in Uganda, which happened to be one of the places that was a main route into modern slavery. So we saw an opportunity for a synergy in educating people and establishing a project. We started to work together and brainstorm some ideas about how we might put together an app to help people. We've been able to work with this incredible team of developers in Uganda, uh, kind of brought this prototype to life and enabled us to pilot it in, first of all in Qatar and then in Kenya um, and keep adapting it based on the feedback we were getting until we actually had a tool that we could, we could launch. So one of the real benefits to having a team that's based in Uganda is those who are developing the app have an intimate knowledge and understanding of the challenges facing young people in employment in Uganda, in East Africa, in Kenya and more broadly around the world. Right at the airport you landed so he took the passports and then gave us some money, accommodation, given mattresses, and then told where the cafeteria was. So we waited, we just waited. Six months down the line, we were still being paid nearly quarter or half the salary we'd been promised. So just good work app is more of an awareness tool which deals with the first scenario of problem solving. If people know better, they can do better, they can make better choices. The employer has a very big responsibility to make sure that the process, uh, the way the process is done is according to the standards that the employer wants. The major problem is normally the company. So some of these companies, they have these people working for them, but they are not ready to follow you know, the, the, the regulations uh, or the code of conduct set by Minister of the Labour or by the government. We also believe it's an incredible opportunity for employers to actually start to engage more directly with workers, to engage more with those recruiters and for there to be more transparency within that whole process so that employers are paying enough for recruiters so they're not out of pocket as well and that the workers who come in are, are, are able to come in without having to pay for a job. I think countries like Qatar and the UAE, Saudi, other places in the Gulf, they're all these incredible places of opportunity. Um, they've seen such incredible growth and development over the last few years and things like the World Cup in Qatar, there's a need for really even more rapid, rapid growth and development and with that comes incredible opportunity that also the, the speed of growth also has led to gaps that people fall through um, and that is often what has helped contribute to these situations of exploitation. The exploitation of workers and modern slavery exists on every country in the world, in nearly every community in the world, and so every individual can do something to engage with this issue and to make a difference.